Hello and welcome to Amigos Retro Gaming. The Amiga 2000 hard drive pretty much gave up the ghost. Um, it's very intermittent. It doesn't seem to be related to time or heat. Uh, if I leave it on for a long time and then reboot the machine, it seems to fail. Uh, if I let it cool down again and try again, it's still failing, but other times I come back to it and it boots fine. So I've removed the uh, drive there. I don't think the um, card itself is uh, the problem. I think it's actually the drive. I've got another hard drive here to just test with it. Uh, whether I use that one or another whole uh, drive and card. I've got another drive and card. I've done some testing with the cards, the accelerator cards, and the one that's in the, at the moment, so it's the second card that I installed uh, from the videos, the two previous videos, uh, that's definitely working as a 68030 processor. I ran a different um, benchmarking software and called SysSpeed and it does actually pick it up properly. SysInfo doesn't seem to be picking this card up properly. It picks it up, shows that it's a 68030 but doesn't show the speed. Anyway, I did some practical testing with um, Frontier Elite 2 and I tested it with the 68000 enabled and the game's virtually unplayable and so rebooted in the 68030 mode and it's a lot better so I went from one frame per second with the 68000 uh, to probably about four frames a second on the 68030 and I know that sounds really slow in these modern days but you know, um, when you're talking about these old computers, it was actually quite fast and makes the game quite playable. And I did some testing with this as well, and I got the same result. So the 68030 processor is definitely working. So while I had these cards out, I thought I'd have a close look at, um, you know, some of the jumper settings and memory layout, BIOS, by the way, this uh, card, which was the first card I installed, I couldn't get the menu that's expected when uh, holding down the two mouse buttons and booting the machine. And I'm not sure why that is, but maybe it's something to do with the uh, uh, ROM chips. I haven't compared the two, which is something I'll do. Uh, but you have a close look here. I've taken the uh, metal shielding can off here and hopefully you can see the 68030 processor here and the maths coprocessor as far as I understand the FPU floating point unit so I was having a close look around this board here and you may be aware of the naming conventions for the Amiga motherboards, so the Amiga 500 was Rock Lobster, B52 songs, uh, the Amiga 600 was uh, Junebug, and the 1200 was Channel Z. Now, I was having a really close look at this board and I noticed uh, the writing on the solder mask here. It's called the Edge. Now, I'm not sure, I haven't looked into it, but I'm assuming that would be something to do with the edge from U2. Or is it a song name? I'm not sure. Yeah, so I've actually tested this with Frontier Elite 2 as well, and it is definitely working at the faster rate. So that board's working, albeit partially. I'm not sure about that, why it's not... Um, Coming up with the boot menu, I've checked the jumper settings and compared the two boards to the same revision. I've compared all the jumpers, they're all set the same. So maybe to do with the ROM chips, not sure. Kindly pointed out in the previous videos, 
Pixel Vixen, who, if you don't know who she is, uh, John interviewed her at Amiga Island, so you can take a look at that video on Amigos Retro Gaming. Uh, she pointed out the um, RAM issue, I was, well, it's not really an issue, it's by design. Uh, the RAM, when I had a, f I had a 4 meg, so this has got 2 megabytes of RAM, fast RAM here. I installed a 4 meg RAM card and gave me 6 megs total and then I added another 4 and it was showing a total of only 8 megabytes I think it was which you know um, implied that this 2 meg here was being disabled and as Pixel Vixen pointed out the Zorro 2 uh, bus system really only supports 8 megabytes of RAM in a nutshell. I'm no expert clearly on these systems. I like to tinker around with them and um, learn these little bits and pieces on the way that's part of the fun for me and just reviving these machines getting them back up and running and testing them with games and bits and pieces. So um, I suspect that the 8-up card here, which I found had a fault, well the software found there was a memory fault and when I removed this card the memory fault went away. I suspect um, it will be because I've exceeded the, uh, the 8 megabyte limit. It clearly states in the Amiga 2000 manual about the 8 megabyte limit there. So I suspect if I took the 4 meg card that I've got in here and is testing fine along with the 2 meg on the accelerator if I remove that 4 meg and install this 4 meg which I thought was faulty because the software was telling me it was that it may test fine because I'm not I'm no longer exceeding the 8 megabyte limit so I'll try that out and um, see how that goes. I've got some other options for this machine as far as hard drives are concerned. Uh, I've pulled this hard drive and controller out of another Amiga 2000. Look at that beast of a hard drive. That thing is massive. Massive physically. I'm not sure what size that is, um, but yeah, physically massive. Someone's hacked in a um, switch here. Don't like the look of this though. The uh, cable's not looking too good there. I'll tidy that up and it shrink. Actually, I might even do away with this. I'm not even sure why. I guess it's a switch so that you can turn the drive off and just boot from the floppies, but. If you're running the later ROMs, I don't see the need for this. Uh, if you're running ROM 1.3, it could be quite handy if you just want to um, boot from the floppies. Although, if you've got a bootable floppy, it's going to take precedence over the hard drive anyway. So, the machine had testbed written on the cover. So, I'm assuming it was some sort of testbed machine where you could just physically disable power to the hard drive easily from the rear by flicking the switch there. So not exactly sure what the use of that would be. Um, also out of that same computer there's another 8-up card fully populated. I might look into using that also. I'm assuming that's got 8 megs of RAM, but yeah I'll check that out. And also I've got, what's this, a hard, hard drive controller of some sort, GXB-VO89. 
So, not a hundred percent sure. What, oh, here we go. Oh, yellow sticker here. A two zero nine zero. Okay, so I'll look that up. But it's got uh, oh here. This will be the SCSI port here. I'm assuming. Yeah, so there's uh, another option. I've got a few options as far as cards go, but actual physical hard drives are fairly thin on the ground. Um, this, I think, oh, this is slightly different again. It's actually on a, um, this looks like a proper factory made mounting bracket. It has a label Microbotics, which are the same people that um, manufactured the 8UP card. So, yeah, another hard drive controller there. And um, I'm not sure what the state of these drives are. Oh, sorry, what the state of these cards are. They, um, they're not tested, so got a Nexus SCSI plus 8 mega memory so uh, I guess you can plug your 30 pin sims in down here uh, drive controller slot there so these cards came loose with the gear that I picked up and I picked up the Amiga 2000s and uh, a 1200 and a 500 plus I think it was and other Amigas a couple of 600s and um, a 2500 as well unfortunately no A1000 <laughs> still looking for that oh, there were two A3000s in there as well uh, one was recoverable oh both no both boards needed to um, substantial repair so uh, but they w are both working now that is uh, Great Value Products A4000 HC plus B another controller I assume that would be for the A4000 not sure A lot of this hardware is new to me. Um, I think, as I said early on in one of my first videos, I'm certainly no expert, and I really only had an Amiga 500 and plugged in discs and loaded games and loaded Workbench and did some word processing. Was about the extent of what I did. So this is all a huge learning curve for me. Um, and there looks like another one of these hard drive cards. Uh, I also noticed that the previous owner on a lot of this gear has put uh, black crosses on things uh, I think to denote that they're faulty I've come across a lot of things that have got the black crosses on that actually aren't faulty so um, or maybe there's some small fault that I'm not aware of at this stage but yeah there's another hard drive card and the other option I thought of for getting this machine hard drive capable is using the Alpha Data uh, Tandem IDE controller and actually just putting in an IDE card into this machine. So, yeah. Um, so I've got lots of possibilities for this machine. And, um, yeah, so I'll try some of those options out and see how we go. So keep an eye out for more videos on this uh, Amiga 2000 classic beige Amiga 2000 uh, and get some of these add-ins uh, installed and hopefully a bootable hard drive and at least uh, maybe even WHD load uh, get some games going on this thing and make sure it's all running reliably so thank you very much for watching